Hello, everyone. This is Bradley. So today, this is a fundamental tutorial talking about the loop node within geometry nodes. Just to clarify that up to the moment I'm recording this video, 3.1 hasn't been released, and there isn't any loop node being implemented within geometry nodes. And it's very unlikely that the loop node will come until 3.3, at least. Okay. It can come much, much later because there are many more important things developers need to do. That's why I started this tutorial because many people are asking for some functionality that requires a loop. Loop node is not very difficult to make, but it's kind of very difficult to explain because you have to make a loop node from case by case if the developer is not providing to you. And there is some limitation that it limits the full proceduralness if you have to make this by your own. We were going to discuss the difficulty and the tricky part of this kind of loop. Uh, if you are not clear what's the loop, why do you need that? Basically, if you would like to make a random uh, randomness with your instances, then you need actually a loop node instead of doing the regular instancing. So let's just start. While recognizing the difference, there's another thing I would like to discuss when you're trying to design your own loop node. Okay, here there's an issue. Right now I define that uh, 1 plus 1 equals to 2 and so on and so forth. But maybe I would like to change my idea. I would like to plus 2 instead. For each of these kind of area, I would like to plus 2 instead of 1. So I have to change all these kind of 2 by going through every node. Uh, obviously there is a definitely shortcut to make this process easier. but it's not really too easy. Okay. Considering about you have billions of them, it's kind of very chaotic. On the other hand, for serial loop, uh, it's, it's also not very kind of easy. Okay. So how to control this kind of parameter kind of important in this case? Okay. Definitely there are ways like you plug the A value node so that you can plug every second socket so that if you would like to plus one, you just type one, you plus two, you type two, but uh, it's not a very beautiful. You have so many linkages. If you end up a loop, which ends up 1,000 times of repeats, then you have 1,000 linkages just for this functionality. And this is just a single control. If we end up with more kind of randomness, more kind of parameters, then you have to duplicates tons of this kind of linkage, having tons of controls, which is not very productive. Okay. So just to know this kind of idea, that's why we always go through a specific routine of design. Instead of doing this kind of this ways, doing this kind of parallel way, we always do series because there are some benefits to design the loop node in series. I know this might be very confusing to you about so what this person is talking about or this kind of bullshit plus minus, but these are kind of important because uh, talking about design, it's, uh, it's very, it, this is the part where it's very difficult to explain loop node, while by functionality is actually not very difficult. So let's go through a very practical example. That's a, we start with a curve line. Okay. And I definitely need a group output so that I can output this geometry. So this right now, we're basically just generating a lines shooting up to the skies. There's only start and end point. So let's resample curve. So that we're generating more vertices. Okay. And let's point instance it. And let's instance a curved circle. Turn the resolution down to three so that we can better visualize this kind of structure. And basically what I'd like to do is I would like to connect all these kind of points together to form a spline and then repeat this entire process for the other two vertices. Okay. So in this case, we firstly need to separate these kind of vertices so that we know how to actually construct a spline according to it. So what we are going to do is uh, very simple. Firstly, we need to be able to uh, access all these kind of vertices. So we realize the instance, 
and then we are going to separate the geometry. And we're going to separate the geometry based on the selection. How we're going to select. Okay. So with the index, and I'm going to use a module function. So take that thing to the module, which basically means it will loop to output zero in this given value. In this case, since we are starting with the three, then output in three and plug that into selection. Okay. So now we isolate this the other two points, but I would like to have the rest of the points being isolated. And it does not really show anything because there is no curve. But uh, we we still have something being output. As you can see, there is a 55 splines being output. It, we just do not see it, but uh, they are there. Okay. So next, what we are going to do is basically just to construct a curve line and take a set of position. And we need to use the location from this geometry to define the location of our curve line. Okay. So we take a resample curve. Uh, we also need to know how many vertices of our spline needs to be generated. Here we know the resample count is 55. So we just type 55. And then we transfer attribute. Take these nodes, take the vector, and based on the index, transfer these positions, and finally output that. We need to get the position attribute so they can write it. So now we actually form a splice. Okay. So this is not a very difficult setup. Uh, it should be easy to understand. Okay. So this is we form a single spline. Okay. This looks kind of a long process, and there are lots of more procedural settings that we actually need to add for this process, but currently this is it. Okay. You get a kind of idea, and then it will be good. But this is just a one spline. We have the other two vertices to work with. So in such a kind of case, what you can do is basically you just duplicate it, this entire setup and do the connection and do the join geometry. And in this time, instead of using the index directly with the module, uh, actually, we can use the index on two. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> uh, we still need to index a uh, module at the three, but so we are going to make an offset. Okay, so we add one. So now we get a second spline. So how do we get this third spline? Then we basically again do the same. We basically duplicate this entire process again and connect it to the join geometry. And this time we added two. So now we finally connected these vertices all together to form three splines. Yay! Congratulations! But you're looking at the node tree. Looks something horrible. Okay. It definitely looks horrible. And this is, I can barely see procedural. It's, it's just very dumb. Okay. Another important thing is now I would like to change this resolution to four. I do not like three. I would like to have four. Okay, what a bummer. So I have to change all this kind of value of module into four. And let's module at four. And uh, another module at four. And now we form the three splines. So we, we need to have another fourth spline. So what we do is we duplicate this entire process again and join geometry. And we let's change these values. And finally, we have these four splines. But later, I again changed my idea. I think a four is not very nice. Then I have to make it 17, 100, or whatever stuff. Then you realize that this, this is, there are so many problems with this setup that you must not repeat this process manually. This is very, very bad. That's why to avoid this kind of repetition, we really need a loop node. The base, the most basic concept of a loop node is basically just to group these nodes together into a group node. Okay. And then we add one values all the times based on this loop. Okay. So that 
If we make up these group nodes, for example, let's output these values. It becomes a little bit more easy. Let's just join this geometry together. So we add ones, add one. Now we add two and duplicate this process at three. But this is still not a procedure. And there are lots of issues with this that we have to solve. So this is not too ideal and it looks kind of very ugly, pointless, and so on and so forth. So we really need a loop node. I'm not kidding, we really need a loop node. No, there is no joking about that. Okay. There's also so many things we actually need to change within this loop. Okay. So how to correctly design a loop node? As mentioned previously, that uh, instead of doing everything in parallel, we need to do everything in series. The reason we will discuss this later, okay. There is a very important thing for a loop node to have, which is the loop index. Actually, I do have a preset, which is called a loop index. It's kind of very simple. You can actually check uh, what this node is doing. But uh, what's really important is that uh, there is only a mass node, which is plus one. So the important functionality of this loop index is that you plus one, your index starts with zero, and you plus one every time, and you output this index. Exact the same values. So the input is called index. The output is also called index. You can also change them into integer because the index is an integer. But uh, you know that uh, this is start from zero, this end up one because of this math. Okay. So this is very important that we were going to discuss. So what it does in this case is basically you index, connect all these kind of values, connect all these kind of values so that you realize output zero, output one, input one, output two, output, uh, input two, output three. So that every time, although they are the same group nodes, but you actually receive different values. And uh, a very b huge benefit of this kind of doing is as long as you just duplicate all this kind of node over and over again, okay, you can just hit FF so that it, they automatically connect them together. So you do not really need to do the things like uh, Connecting, 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 giving tons of noodles. It's much cleaner and easy to achieve the result we're looking for. Okay. So basically the point here is, regardless whether this operation are dependent to the last operation or not, we're going to make up a loop in series instead of doing that parallel. So this is very important. Because the huge issue is that from operation to operation, there is no relationship. We do not need to know how the second spline is being formed in order to form our third spline or fourth spline and so on and so forth. They are irrelevant to each other. But we have to design in this way. Okay. Uh, and talking about design, this is kind of very tricky. So there are several things we actually need when we are doing a serious loop. Basically, we need to draw in geometry. So we, we start with a geometry, so that we are actually sampling the geometry. So we start, let's call it as a sampling. And then the other is the looping. We can organize this a little bit better. So the loop inputs will be joined together with our individual input here. Okay. So that's, uh, they will be joined together. The second is the sampling, just the, the normal functionality that we do, we realize, separate, and so on and so forth. Okay. So the third, I, I do not think it's, uh, it's kind of a very important for proceduralness of this entire setup because previously I've mentioned, I do not know this count. I need to in output this, uh, I need to get an input of this count from somewhere. Uh, in 2.1, we started to have this domain size. So let's just use these domain size 
let's I think it's the points cloud or mesh curve uh, basically kind of idea just to plug these kind of values okay so now we basically constructed this loop but uh, remember if you're constructing this loop you always need to output completely the same thing so that all this kind of loop can share the same parameter okay. so now we go outside the loop and we basically do the process that we have discussed earlier that we are going to Oh, we also need to name this output. So then we know this is the loop output. This is the sampling, the other is the geometry. Okay, so this is good. So everything is being connected in series and we just need to hit FFF and just uh, try to make it a little bit of correction. Normally it will be fine. Okay. There won't be any problem. And right now we do not see anything good happening. But if you try to plug these curved circles into the geometry, then you see this functionality happening. Okay. So we do see something is happening here. The lens here is not very obvious, so you can try to increase the end or whatever stuff. Uh, actually, I think I've made some mistakes within the node group, but uh, it, this is just an example of how to construct a loop. In reality, this is the helical connection node I've constructed. Okay. So basically, this is kind of idea. So from this node group, you can actually see the downside of menu looping. That you have to, you cannot control the iteration by your own. So you have to duplicate all these kind of nodes by yourself. So if you iterate five times, then you have to duplicate the node group, node group, node group. But the benefit of this is kind of a series, you can always just hit F, then everything being connected very well. Okay. So even if with the, from the operation to operation, there is essentially no relationship to each other, but you'd better to join them together within the loop so that you are actually constructing this loop node in series. Not to say that uh, for the series loop, you really need to connect them in series, but this is a different story. Uh, here, I just want to give you a rough idea of how to construct a loop. In reality, different kind of loop definitely will be designed differently. Uh, sometimes they may not even contain this kind of a geometry socket because in my kubeflow tutorial, I was, connect, uh, I was making a loop node that's only contains this float output. So basically duplicate the float approximately four or approximately four inside the kind of node group and so on so forth. So it's basically this kind of idea. But what's really important and what's really required for all this kind of loop is you always need to have the index so that you can do whatever other functionalities. Okay. So we hope uh, in the future we can have the loop node so that this kind of process can be made much easier. But uh, in the meantime, I hope this tutorial is helpful for you to understand how to actually construct uh, the basics of how to construct a loop node. Because uh, many times when people are asking, it's you really need the kind of loop node. Okay. Uh, also, another thing I would like to mention is the index is changing, uh, which means if you're doing a random value inside, and you use this index, then obviously the random value will be different from loop to loop. So this is kind of functionality that you can achieve when you're making the variant uh, instances and so on and so forth. There are lots of ways, but uh, I think that today this is already pretty long. So I will probably stop my tutorial here. Okay. Uh, and I hope that this tutorial has kind of helped you because many people really asking the features that requires a loop. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.